Hey everybody, welcome to day 77. It's day 77, a crazy, crazy day 77 for, I mean, I, mean, I feel like we've been doing this, I don't know, it doesn't seem like 77 days, but we, here we are, here we are. So welcome to everybody who is who is tuning in, who is tuning in live, as well as those who are, are just tuning in on YouTube and uh, my website, entityseeker.ca. Um, and all of those. So welcome to all of you, whoever is uh, listening in. We get people, it's amazing, because we get people from all over the world um, that, that pop up, and it's so neat to see everybody coming in. So good morning, Wes and Ed and Patricia. Uh, good morning, Dale and Marge and Des. It's nice to see everybody this morning. Uh, I hope you guys had a great night last night. Um, it was it was a little weird here. We had a, we had a lot of, of wind and, and whatnot, which kind of, uh, I had I had an idea that I was going to go out and do some some fire or whatever outside, and that didn't happen because it was just too windy. It's just too windy. Um, so welcome and good morning to to everybody. And as I say, like it's um, it, we've well we've got some we've got some neat questions um, that came in over the last couple of days, and I can't wait to get to them because not only are we going to talk about um, old war sites um, and what some of the messages might be within these old haunted war sites like Gettysburg and things like that, but also um, a really great question about kids and investigations. So we're going to chat about that too. Um, it was some just as I say, brilliant questions, brilliant questions coming in, and I'm I'm excited about them. So. Um, yeah, I hope you guys as I had a great night. Um, how is everybody's how's everybody's weather doing? We're we're doing pretty good. We're doing we've got we've got sun now. We're just <laughs> but we're breezy and it's but it's warm. It's very warm out right now. So that's always a good thing. And the sun is the sun is lovely. Um, I've noticed like in my, if for some reason in my comment feed over the last like number of days, I haven't been seeing everybody's comments and I can see them afterwards. Like once the video is posted, I can go back and look at them. But for some reason, so if you ask me a question and I look like I'm ignoring it, I'm not ignoring it. It's just like, it's just like not coming up. So I don't know what, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to play with it here. Here we go. Oh yeah. Look at that. There's like, there's, oh, see, like there's so many. Now I have to, usually I don't have to physically scroll it, but now I have to physically scroll up the comments. That's crazy. So yeah. So good morning, Brandy and Shadow and Connor. Nice to see you. <laughs> Des says he's super hot. Oh God. Yeah. I hate, I, I know you guys are having like, it seems like you're having a heat wave down there. That's, that's crazy. Uh, we're not in a heat wave yet, thankfully, but we're, yeah, yet. Alberta tends to get them though. Like we'll get, we'll get like these, these weird bouts of, of like super hot weather, but usually it's nothing compared to, to like, like South, South in the, in the U S or anything. We're not boiling eggs on cars. Usually, usually like maybe like a couple of days a year, but not, not all the time. Um, so yeah. So as I say, great questions today, um, that have come up. And I also wanted to share with you guys this, because this is, this is super cool. So apparently on, I think it's Netflix. It is, it's Netflix. So on July 1st, I had, I have to put this out there so you guys can mark your calendars for this. Cause I think it's going to be great. A lot of you guys will probably remember the show Unsolved Mysteries with Robert Stack, right? Well, I'll remember that show. Like it's, a lot of people just grew up on Unsolved Mysteries and that was our, really our first, first introduction to the paranormal in a lot of ways, um, through television and things like that was Unsolved Mysteries with Robert Stack. Um, but on July the 1st, guess what? Netflix is rebooting it. Um, so they're going to be putting a brand new series out. There's like a brand new, uh, like a whole pile of new episodes, um, they've got ones called, let's see here, like mystery, mystery on the rooftop, 13 minutes, house of terror, no ride home, uh, Berkshire's UFO missing witness. Like there's a whole season of, of brand new, um, unsolved mysteries that are coming out. So I thought I had to share that with you guys. Cause that's like super cool. Cause I remember like that was, uh, that was something we kind of, you know, a lot of people ended up growing up on. Um, so that's, it's really, really cool. Um, Brandy's asking, <laughs> Yeah, where is Des? Where is that? <laughs> where where does he live? Where is why is he always roasting? Yeah, I know. It's like where are you, where are some of you people? I tell you. I know there's like I know there's some Texas there. Um I know there's uh, yeah, that's that's so I know I know there's there's a lot of people from down south. Um okay, so the question that I wanted to really start with today um, before we kind of get into our big one, uh, was, I thought was really, really good. And I've seen it posted in a couple of places and I wanted to get, give everybody my take on it because I think it's a really crucial question is something that we don't often address. And that is, what do you think about bringing kids on investigations 
and what age is appropriate? Where do you draw that line? And I get, so I get this question a lot because of my classes, right? So people that are looking for, um, you know, bringing their kids to the classrooms, the tours, um, live events, all of that kind of thing. And to be honest, the, the, the answer at the, at the end of the day uh, really does come down to the kid, number one, because some kids, you know, at age 10 are more mature than some people at age, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18. Um, so I know for me, when I was a kid, uh, by the time I was 10, I had a like ridiculous academic interest in this stuff, uh, as well as experiencing it in investigations and things like that. So for me, you know, I was looking for the education. I was looking for all of that at that age. So it, it made sense. Uh, and of course there was nothing at that time to, you know, attend or anything like that. It was all research reading and, uh, and television, but, um, you know, at, at that point in time, I was, yeah, I was fascinated and I was already steeped in living in, in haunted places throughout my childhood too. So I had like these constant investigations going on because I was, I was living in haunted locations all the time. But, um, but yeah, so I think number one, it depends on the kid. Um, what do what we what we do is probably the next stage in in this analysis to, to answer this question is um, what at that point are we teaching them? I think we have to set an intention um, for what it is we want them to understand and learn and take away from it because we've got when we, we look at kids who, you know, we're, they're in the developmental stages, they're starting to want to learn to understand their world. I think there is no better exercise than to be able to educate them about the unknown and to not be fearful of the unknown, but to be curious. And here's, here's the reason why I say what I say, what I'm saying. So if we look now at the, a lot of the current situations that we've got going on in the world right now, we've got you know, the, the outing of, of so much racism, we've got, you know, misunderstandings about different religions, we've got, you know, a lot of fear mongering, we've got all sorts of things like that. So here's the thing with things like investigations and how we can teach kids with them. Um, we've got the ability at this point to be able to get kids to feel curiosity and to, and to push forward to understand it with proper information. And this is one of the reasons why I do my classes and my tours. And I, I usually start a, like, I usually recommend to parents 10 and up for, um, uh, uh, like my courses and stuff like that for kids be, and, and as I say, it depends on the kid because some kids can't deal with it at all. But, um, but to be able to make sure that they're getting the right information, that they're going and seeking out that information when something is frightening them, um, to be able to understand it, to be able to delve into it and to challenge their beliefs about it. Um, I think is really important. And I think if we did that more with, with issues of the unknown, um, say for example, when kids are exploring a new culture or they're not understanding, you know, a certain, uh, a, a certain skin tone, or they're not understanding, um, you know, whatever, whatever it is that they're watching to be able to have the ability to go, I'm going to investigate this. So I'm going to critically think through this, um, and to be able to put that fear on the table, recognize that they have it, um, and then start to work through it um, with proper information, with the proper guidance, I think is a really, really crucial skill to have as, as kids, especially now. Um, so I think we can, I think we can do a lot of teaching when it comes to investigations and, and things like that. I think where things go completely south is when, you know, we're, we're, you know, as I say, bringing the kid because, you know, they're looking for, uh, uh, some sort of cheap thrill. Um, we're not educating them. We're not, um, you know, teaching them critical thinking skills, um, or putting them in danger. Um, you know, I think when it comes to things like, um, uh, you know, private homes and things like that, if you're, if I, I don't think those are time for, uh, you know, to, to be, you know, bringing people in for, for a scare or fear or something like that. That's just, no, you, you need to be focused. You need to be dealing with the client and you need to be present for the client. You can't be distracted with, with kids and all that shit going on. But, um, but I think, I think we do have this, uh, this prime ability, um, with the paranormal to be teaching these kids in, in a brand new way and teaching them critical thinking skills because we're missing, we're terribly missing that right now. We're terribly missing that. And what I've been reading in social media and some of the comments and, and stuff like that about, um, as I say, some of the, the things that are going on, um, you know, with the resistance down in the U S um, with, uh, you know, even in, in Canada, when I hear, you know, 
in, like it in, just information and stuff like that conveyed about first nations people or um you know muslim people or and things like this where the, the information is just blatantly wrong it's just wrong um and it often comes because people don't haven't had the time to go and actually investigate and take a look at something that is frightening them they're, they're seeing what's plastered on the media they're seeing what's plastered in the news and they're not bothering to to go any further than that it just all of it stops there and then you start to get these these weird ideals about people that are just wrong so um, i think as i say we have the opportunity to to change that dynamic at a very early age and i think the paranormal is a really good way to do it so that's that's my uh, my opinion i'm just gonna i'm i'm scrolling through everybody's comments now because i know i'm uh I know I'm missing. Um, yeah, so good uh, good morning to those who I have not said good morning to. Donald and Suzette and Lori uh, and Kaz. Hey! Uh, and Wes and Irene and uh, Mark. Okay, so we're, I think I'm caught up. I think I'm mostly caught up now. All right, there we go. So the next question that I loved um, actually came from Dan, and I thought this was really, really great um, because we're, you know, we, we hear about war sites old wartime sites like Gettysburg, um, uh, Franklin, Tennessee, um, uh, you know, all of these different locations and all over the world, Roman Empire, all of these different places that have seen, you know, war and battle and all of that kind of thing. And then we start to see residual energy, right? Um, we are, we start to see this residual energy and we start to see these wartime events start to replay themselves. Um, and Kaz is saying oh, we're, we're reactive and not proactive when it comes to things. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's exactly what it is. We, we react instead of responding. And, uh, you know, that's, it's, it's totally true. So this was Dan's question and I thought this was really cool. Um, some areas seem haunted because of war and some aren't. For example, Franklin, Tennessee and Gettysburg both said to be haunted locations. Wars have been fought through the centuries and it seems only that a few locations of more recent wars are active. Well, I've heard of a haunted church in Italy from World War II. Um, I think that if the wars were a cause, some of these areas would show hauntings going back uh, ages. Any thoughts on this? I hear geology as an example. However, I'm not sure I quite buy it. Um, I wonder if there's a sort of message we are supposed to hear. Um, so this is a really, I thought this question was brilliant. I think, I think it's really good. And so here's, here's my take on, on battlefields and war and, and that kind of thing when it comes to hauntings, because we hear about it all the time. Um, and there's two portions to this answer. And the first answer is to, to, I think, reaffirm the geology theory in some areas, because when we look at Gettysburg, for example, and we look at the type of phenomenon, first of all, that is um, typical at these sites that are haunted, um, that have seen, you know, crazy battles and, and cannon fire and soldiers and all of this kind of thing. Um, we do have to count the ge geology in because residual energy, which is the replaying of events um, over and over again, that it's not an intelligent haunting, it's just a, an image in a, uh, you know, in a, in a setting as if it's it'd been recorded, right? And it repeats itself, but it's not intelligent or conscious. Um, when we get a situation like that, it is often tied into the electromagnetics in the environment, just on a scientific principle. Um, it seems to be highly... Uh, uh, highly related to the levels of electromagnetic fields. Um, and Gettysburg is a great example because Gettysburg is sitting on top of a bed of quartz. So we've got already very weird fluctuations in EMF um, and we have to take that into consideration. We just do. Um, the fact that this stuff is getting recorded and replayed in environments where there are higher levels of electromagnetics in the same way that um, we're getting uh, uh, you know, a, a tape, for example, a magnetic tape can record things in the environment um, and record sound and things like that. How it's happening, we don't know yet, uh, but it is it is definitely a factor. Um, we just don't know how that's happening as of right now. Um, but the other, there's another part to this though, too, and there's one reason why I think that these different sites, the haunting specifically, I think these sites are, they're important. They're important to understand the, the, the history and things like that. Um, however, do I think that they're holding a specific message for us? And this is where I, th I think we have to get into something about the universe, about how it works and about what I think in, in my opinion, um, stuff like this is, is there for, and I do think it is, is a geological anomaly. Um, we see a repeating, uh, a repeating history, but we have to remember that in order to change history and or to change our, our, our present, 
We have to be able to change the vibration of our history. We just, we have to, it's just the way the universe works. You know, we have to be able, the, the universe does not want us looking backwards. It, it really doesn't. The universe is motion forward, motion forward all the time. Source is ever expanding. It is, it is, it is causing us to, to step forward is not causing us to step backwards. Um, it doesn't want us, us stuck in our history. And here's the thing. When we've got a universe that is so incredibly supportive of that expansion, whatever that is, when we have to be able to take a look at things like hauntings, things like residual energy and stuff like that, and start to factor in what we know about, about the, the expansion of, of our world, of ourselves, and that the fact that the universe doesn't look back. We, we have a... Uh, we have like a, a, this is like GPS, you know, all it cares is where we are compared to where we want to be. It doesn't really care about what's happened. So when we get a geological phenomenon like residual energy or electromagnetic phenomenon like residual energy, I think it's important we, that we look at it as that phenomenon specifically. Um, and if we've got something like that that's repeating again and again and again in our experience, then I think we have to take a look at where we are as a collective, as a consciousness, all of that in terms of our vibration. What are we hanging on to? I think we've got to take a hard look at the understanding that holding on to our history when it comes to our own, our own toxicity uh, and whatnot can cost us our destiny. Okay, really, it, it can cost us our destiny. We can only give energy in so many directions. We are, we are finite in that way. We can only give energy in so many directions. That's what causes burnout. And you, if, you, if you are continuously putting this energy and putting this, this you know, trying to understand and trying to, to pick apart and whatnot, um, our, our, our past and things like that, we won't have the fuel to energize where we're going. We just, we just don't. And the universe functions like this because it really does. It wants us to understand where those, those, those faults in, in our, our, our being or like our state of being is, where we can do better, um, where we can improve, but it's not in being stuck in the, in the past looping and repeating itself and so on and so forth. So when we, I think, you know, this is often where we, we get the, uh, you know, the common belief that, you know, spirits die or people die and they become spirits that are stuck looping over and over and over again. This is just not how the universe works. You know, residual energy is a phenomenon that is, it's like a magnetic tape. It just plays and plays and plays and plays. But when we, when we start looking at consciousness, consciousness does not function this way. It just doesn't. It wants expansion. It wants to be able to, to, uh, to, to move forward. The great life is in front of you. It's not behind you. It, it just, it really isn't. And the opportunity, this, this is really one of these, these opportunities with residual energy to be able to observe and say, I can be in control of it rather than it being in control of me. And we can sit and observe what's going on and learn from these things that are, are, are moving and, and repeating and, and being created by, you know, whatever it is, whether you believe it's, it's geology or, or whatever. Um, so when we rehearse visions of stuff, when we rehearse it over and over and over again, and when we're playing this out in our minds repeatedly, we have to really understand that when we rehearse the vision, we empower the vision. So whether you're rehearsing something that's not so good, that's not so fun, or whether you're rehearsing something that is really positive, we empower our vision. We just, we just do. Um, so I think when we, we look at a site like Gettysburg, when we look at a site that is replaying these events again and again and again, I think it's giving us the opportunity to decide whether or not we want to continue to rehearse visions in a certain way. I, I really do. I think we have to begin to think about it in a different way. Um, I think residual energy is a geological or environmental phenomenon. I don't think it's something that's conscious. I don't think it necessarily has a, a specific, I don't think it's spirits that are having a message for us. I think their message is the fact that when we experience spirit and consciousness, that it is ever expanding. And when they ha we have that dialogue with non-physical energies, um, they repeat that consistently everywhere. Um, I don't think they want us hanging on to, to the past. I don't think they want us hanging on to, to trauma because as I say, we hold on to our history. It can cost us our destiny because we just, we just don't have the available energy and power to put our hand up and go, I'm, I'm free. Pick me, pick me. 
you know, if we're stuck back on, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm burdened down with all my, my pain and my hurt and my, my, you know, my crap that's going on, you know, we are not free when that roll call comes up for you to do what you're born to do when you've identified that gift, you know, if you're not free of, of your, your baggage and your crap to turn around and say, Hey, I'm, I'm available. I'm up, pick me. I'm good to go then you know you you miss out you miss it so i don't think the universe intends that on 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 really any level um you know but we we do we have to be available um the universe really doesn't want us looking back it it really is expanding it really is um so i don't think that that's what it's i don't think residual energy is there for necessarily as i say a message but i think it is there um for us to understand that um you know we we don't have to be replaying those those tapes anymore you know we've got an environmental phenomenon here that's cool it's amazing um and there's lots to learn from history but it's learning from history and expanding forward it's not going back rehearsing over and over and over again the problem and the pain it's being able to take the lesson that history has given us whether it be gettysburg or you know world war ii or you know whatever whatever the site is there's lessons there but the lessons are meant for expansion forward they're not meant to be to be rehearsed over and over again so we can repeat the vibration so many people um you know they they really think that if we hang on to the the tragedy that somehow by hanging on to the tragedy it's not going to repeat itself and really at the end of the day in in terms of of you, the universe and source energy um and god you know whatever you call it that's really not how this stuff works because if we're repeating the same story again and again and we're repeating that same energy with it again and again we are ensuring that it's going to repeat itself. We're ensuring that it's going to repeat itself. We have to be able to look at it with conscious awareness and change how we're seeing it. Do it different. We got to do it different. It doesn't mean to forget about it. It means to do it different. And that's where, where I think we need to, to be moving forward and on a number of levels um, with, uh, with, with society. And I think residual energy can tap us into that. I think it can tap us into that where we, you know, we get the chance to sit back and observe, um, uh, you know, whether it be, you know, gunfire or, so, you know, soldiers marching that have been, you know, that image has been there for, you know, a, a century, um, you know, and all of who knows, whatever, whatever the residual energy happens to be, but it gives us a chance to, to be able to do it different. Um, and we, so we have to be careful about how we're looking back at things because we don't want it to be the cost of our destiny. We put too much energy back there and, you know, we spend a lot of time because there's a lot of times too, you know, you get stuck in the, in the cleaning up of our crap. And, uh, and we have to be careful that we're, we're, we're making motion forward and not getting stuck in the, the looking back and trying to dig through it because we do, we only have, we only have so much energy. We really do. And we've got to decide where we want to put it. Do we want to put it and go with the expansion or do we want to be, be stuck rehearsing the same thing again and watching it repeat itself? Because it will, it always will. We look where we want to go and whether or not we want it or not, <laughs> there's the problem, right? We look where we want to go. And, and sometimes if we're looking at the, the bad stuff all the time, we get more of it and then we don't know why. So that's never good. So I'm, I'm scrolling through. So um, Brandy is asking, um, how do we discern holding on to our past versus learning from our pasts and history? I love that. I think the big, I think the, the big, uh, answer to that question, um, is by understanding and asking the question, number one, can I tell this story without emotional attachment to it? Can I detach enough to tell this story without being wound up in it? That's probably one of the, the key signs that you've healed from something is the fact that you can tell the story, you can own the story, you can stand in the story without being bag, like burdened or bogged down with it or, or, um, uh, uh, weighted with it. You can stand in your story. You're not ashamed of it. You can tell it and we can, we can talk about it. Um, and so when, how, how we discern the past from learning from it is being able to ask the questions and then take it one step forward and say, okay, what am I doing different now? What am I doing different? What am I going to do different so that this, what, what have, what do I own in this situation? Number one, what do I own in this situation? What was my contribution to what's gone on and what can I do different? 
That's really the big question. And you know, if we if we're examining that and we're examining what we're what we're doing moving forward, what we're that's that's really the key for this. You know, if we are if if we are stuck in blame, in shame, in guilt, in um, uh, fear, uh, in upset, all of those different things, we know we're rehearsing some 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 bad stories. We just know. Um, and so that's, that's, that would be my answer to that is, um, you know, holding on to it is holding on to a, the same story again and again, learning from it is asking yourself, what do I own? How do I do the next thing? How do I do it different moving forward and do it without blame and guilt? It's not about blame and guilt. It's not about fault. It's about how do we, how do we now own this and move and, and move forward in a new way? So that's really it. And I wanted to... I want to offer you guys a chapter or on, uh, I think, a really, really good reminder about this um, and about who we are. I thought this was so brilliant. Um, and it comes from Asking It Is Given by the wonderful Esther and Jerry Hicks. Um, and I thought this was, this was a great way to, um, uh, I thought this was a great way to uh, start to at least complete our spiritual health care this morning. You are eternal beings who have chosen to participate in this specific physical life experience for many wonderful reasons. And this time-space reality on planet Earth serves as a platform in which you are able to focus your perspective for the purpose of specific creation. You are eternal consciousness, currently in this wonderful physical body for the thrill and exhilaration of specific focus and creation. The physical being that you define as you stands on the leading edge of thought while consciousness, which is really your source, pours through you. And in this, those moments of inexplicable, in, inexpressible elation, those are the times when you are wide open and truly allowing your source to express through you. Sometimes you are fully allowing the true nature of your being to flow through you, and sometimes you do not allow it to flow. This is written to help you understand that you have the ability to always allow your true nature to pour through you, and that as you learn to consciously allow your full connection with the you that is your source, your experience will be one of absolute joy. By consciously choosing the direction of your thoughts, you can be in constant connection with source, with God, with joy, and with all that you consider to be good. And I think this is so true. And as I say, it relates back to what I was what I was saying about the way the universe really functions. And we, we really have to we really have to get that it's not looking to to repeat our pain. It really isn't. It, it's looking for us to to understand the contrast, look at it um, with without judgment, without heat, with ownership and uh, and to be able to move to move forward with it. Um, you know, it's not re as I say, residual energy is a it's a it's a it's a nature phenomenon the same way that a thunderstorm will repeat itself, you know, again and again under the right conditions. It's the same thing with residual energy. But when it comes to conscious interactions, consciousness and spirit and all of those things, it's ever expanding, ever expanding all the time. Um, uh, Connor's got a question as well. And I'm going to grab this. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna have to grab this tomorrow because we're almost out of time anyway. So this is tomorrow's question. <laughs> Speaking of hauntings being related to geological phenomena, what do you think about the theories about a relationship between various hauntings in Edmonton and the Jasper Avenue coal mines? Are the two related? Yeah, I, lo oh, I love this question. Oh my God, okay, well that's, now we got one of the first questions for tomorrow. That's what's happening. <laughs> that's, yeah, Edmonton, you guys, is, uh, is hollow underneath in the downtown core. Okay, so it is all coal mining underneath. So we've got tunnels, like miles and miles of tunnel. Um, and yeah, so that's, I love that. Thank you, Connor. I love that question. Um, yeah, and we will we will chat about that tomorrow for sure because there's, as I say, there's lots that are coming in, lots to talk about. And remember, you guys, holding on to your history can cost us your destiny. So yeah, don't do that. Don't do that stuff. Um, so anyway, everybody, peace affirmations. We got to do them because we got to move into our day with the right energy. Um, so everyone take a breath. I'm a channel of peace and well-being, and my need for peace is abundantly met. I unconditionally accept love and appreciate myself and who I am. I recognize I am grateful for the abundance that is constantly flowing into my life, which I can choose to allow or not. I feel with every breath a sense of peace and love. 
I help others by maintaining and tending to my connection with source as much as possible. This well-being is accessible to me, even in a sea of uncertainty. At this moment, all is well. I am able to liberate myself from my past and live with peace and serenity. I can see and appreciate all the beauty and abundance of my life around me. I am able to embrace love while letting go of fear. And I find peace with the soothing, soothing silence of my inner being. Everybody take a breath. Thank you guys so much for today and spiritual health care. I love it. I love it. I hope you guys found some good information uh, today and can take something away from it. As always, um, I always hope that uh, you guys are taking something from from everything that we do because I know I do all the time. Um, I always learn. I always learn something. I always learn. I have aha moments with you guys, so it's it's amazing. It's so cool. Um, so if anybody anybody that's new, you guys can go to entityseeker.ca or entity or youtube.com/entityseeker uh, and get all the spiritual healthcare classes. They're all in the playlist. So if you guys get a chance to share the playlist, that would be great. Um, that really helps out a lot. And um, I am so looking forward to tomorrow morning we've as I say we've already got a great question to kick it off about um the coal mines and uh and all the crazy stories from down there because it's they're really it's really cool it's a cool piece of edmonton history so um yeah i will see you guys tomorrow morning uh 10 a.m mountain time spiritual health care guys <laughs> see you later bye